tacos, coffee, cars, jet fuel, computer chips, Nike shoes, certain types of food, and even school supplies for your kids going to school. And what do all these things have in common, folks? Well, they all are nearly impossible to find depending on your area and where you do live. So, the next few years are going to be very difficult and it's going to be a scramble for survival. It's going to be a scramble to get your survival supplies put up and put away. Let's just talk about a few things real quick before we get going on this video. Number one, you have your favorite cookies, soda, and canned, like soups and things of this nature. There's things that are happening we're going to be talking about here in a few minutes. Number two, all your canned food or frozen vegetables. There's also things that are going on with that that are affecting the supplies in the stores and maybe some limitations depending on where you live. Cleaning supplies. Cleaning supplies have become back into the whole picture here on based on where you do live. Because in different parts of this country or world, however you want to look at it, you know, there's things that are going on, cases are rising and everything else, and people are not going to be caught with their pants down once again. So they have learned their lesson and they want to be prepared for anything that could be coming down the pike. And over the next two years, it could be a very difficult situation for the general public to survive. Number four, any food or beverages in aluminum cans. We'll cover that topic also. And number five, all the ready to eat meals and foods. Now you got to figure, folks, I did a video about that not too long ago. In just the last year, your ready-to-eat meals have gone up 552%, right through the roof, all right? Because it's in high demand because meat prices are so very high. And why is that? Inflation, all right, folks? The reason all these prices are going up is inflation. In the last seven months, the inflation rate has jumped 5% in just the last seven months. And all the experts in the government, the feds, the Federal Reserve, a lot of the big bankers and everybody else are basically predicting if we stay on the course we are on now, within the first year, inflation is going to be up 8% total. So we're going to go up another 3% by the end of the year. That's gonna be putting a big hurt on your pocketbook. So we're gonna be discussing a lot of these things today on Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I am Charles, and today we're gonna to be discussing why the next few years are going to be a scramble for survival. So let's get going on this video. The world is still short on everything. Might as well get used to it, folks. The pandemic-related product shortages from computer chips, construction material, to food products, to school products, well, that was all supposed to be resolved by now, right? Instead, the world has gained a lesson in the ripple effects of what is going on. Shortages are popping up across the supply chain and the pandemic messes with shipping demands, supplies of all other things that are coming into this country and the global economy a lot of the different experts out there folks they are saying that these shortages are going to probably last into 2023 before they can get a handle on this and get things back in order and things back on the shelves and stock so this way here there are no limitations there are no nothing if you want something you will be able to get it if, as they do stress, nothing else comes along and disrupts any of the shipping industry. Before the pandemic, a shipping container, as I'm going to give you some examples here, a 40-foot container full of goods from Shanghai to warehouses in, say, the Midwest here of America, 
would cost between six to seven thousand dollars going from china to here all right the next scheduled shipments that are going to be leaving china in mid-september which is right around now will cost at least twenty six thousand dollars to go from shanghai china to the mid west here in america and a lot of the freight agents that are out there now these are the folks that control the move of all the goods once they are re received at our ports okay they're in charge of moving it from point a to point b and they've warned that these prices will most likely rise to up to thirty-five thousand dollars per container because of all the rail and trucking difficulties in the united states you see they don't have enough truck drivers they don't have enough trucks and the trains are already at their max capacity in moving these goods the demand is obviously outpacing the supply in the face of enduring shortages of computer chips car giant toyota announced this month in september that it would be slashing its global production of cars by 40 percent factories around the world are limiting operation despite the powerful de demand for their cars because they cannot buy the metal parts the plastic and the raw materials that they do need they can't get it to these plants they're just not there so they're cutting their production by 40 percent that means loss of jobs construction companies are paying more for paint lumber and hardware because they can't get it it's not that it's not out there it just can't get to these stores and they're paying higher prices yes lumber has come down but they're paying higher prices folks they could be waiting weeks and sometimes months to receive what they have ordered in order to complete their projects then here's a great one folks i'm sure you're all going to like this all right then in the middle of august the chinese authorities shut down a container terminal near the city of ningbo after one employee tested positive that's right i said one employee tested positive ningbo is the world's third largest container port so its closure held the potential to snowball into a global event even threatening the supply of goods to american stores in time for the holiday season the Ningbo terminal was back in operation within two weeks, but China's decision to close it because of a single COVID case resonated as a warning that the government might shut down other ports to slow goods to other countries because they want the control. One thing to remember, folks, product shortages and rising costs and inflation continue to bedevil the businesses large and small they're all paying the price and consumers are confronted with an experience once rare in modern times no stock available and no idea when it will come in okay so now let's talk about something that's really affecting us here at home one of the big things is the 2021 nabisco strike all right um on August 10th, they couldn't come to an agreement or anything else, so they did a walkout in their Portland, Oregon plant, which initiated the strike. Over the next several days, other of the local unions at the Nabisco facilities throughout the United States, which is in Colorado, Georgia, Illinois, Oregon, and Virginia, all the major plants, they all joined the strike and walked out also. And by August 23rd, it had affected every bakery and every plant in Nabisco in the country the strike is nabisco's first since a 56 day strike in 1969 all right i mean if you people don't realize what nabisco really is and what kind of products they do have let me just throw out there just a few just so you all know what's going on here 
All right, you have the Better Cheddars, Bonkers Candy, Chase and Sanborn Coffee Company, Cheese Nips, Chips Ahoy, Cream of Wheat. The big one for all you preppers out there, the Fisherman's Yeast. All right, yes, that is made by Nabisco. So if you see it on the shelf, you might want to pick a little bit up if just to uh, throw it in your freezer and hope that you can get more very soon. Geritol, this way here, you know, a lot of you older folks, you need to take something to give you a little pep to your step. And this way here, you can get out and prep more. Chicken in a biscuit, Luna Dunes, Milk Dome, Dog Biscuits for all your little poochies. Ginger Snaps, Fig Newtons, Nutter Butters, Oreos. Then you got your Rice Thins, Rich Crackers, Snack Well Crackers and Snacks, Titty Grams, Triscuits, and Wheat Thins. We also have to really think about all the different can, tin can shortages that are going on around this country, folks. That's another thing that's really inhibiting a lot of different things. It's not a good time. And this is why the supplies over the next two years, it's going to be a very difficult time for people to scramble to survive and to try to put stuff away for their survival products. So you need to be getting out there and checking out some of this stuff and getting what you can now before it is too late. So as you folks can all see, there is so much stuff that is going on that's hindering our comeback in our supply chain from container ships to trucks to trains to move the goods. There's just not enough people. You see, we went through this whole Charlie Victor night theme when it hit and stores were wiped completely out. Warehouses were emptied completely out and everything else. And it's not like flipping a switch and everything's going to be back to normal. If you follow what I'm saying here. Okay, it's going to take time. And that's why all these top analysts for all these huge companies, especially any company that's dealing with the shipping industry, have stated that it's going to take them another two years without any interruptions or anything going wrong to get things back on track to where everything is somewhat back to where it was before the whole shit hit the fan. So what are we going to do? You try to get out there and you try to prep as much as you possibly can. You try to make sure that you're doing whatever you can to put away whatever goods you can right now. We have the whole Nabisco thing going on right now in this country, which has put in a shortages of goods starting to come to the stores. If it hasn't hit your local store yet, if they don't get this resolved soon, it soon will because these companies could only buy up what they could buy up and try to stockpile it all these major stores, and once those stocks are gone, well, you're not gonna get anything else. So you gotta make sure that you are prepared. If those are some of the items and stuff, you need to do your research on Nabisco, and if those are the products that you need for your kids' school lunch, the things that you eat every day to make bread if you need yeast, all this kind of stuff, you need to make sure that you're putting it up and putting it away. We got the whole canned food and frozen vegetables. You know, the mega drought that's been going on out west with all the fires and everything else, well, that's killed off a lot of the, the growing season and everything. You've got all the huge floods and stuff that went from, well, with the last hurricane, went from Louisiana all the way up through into the northeast, affected all that farmland from point A to point B with flooding rains. That's going to affect the harvest crop come fall. Your Canned goods, aluminum goods, we have the huge tin shortage that is still going on because we get a lot of those products are brought over on container ships that are shipped to all these big major corporations. That is still a huge problem. And all your ready to eat meals and foods, they're starting to skyrocket in price and it's getting to the point where people are gonna be either eating canned tuna or canned chicken because it's probably going to be about all that some people can afford to eat. It's a scary situation, folks, and we all need to be paying attention. We need to be ready. We need to be prepped. We need to stay ahead of the game. The mandates that are coming down the pike, that could hurt a lot of people. We just don't know how this is going to play out and who's going to buck the system.
That's why you got to be prepared. So I would like to thank you for joining me today on this video on the next few years are going to be a scramble for survival. You folks all got to get out there. You got to do your part. You've got to be prepared because the next few years isn't looking good. And a lot of these top analysts are saying this is going to be one of the toughest decades in history as far as inflation, as far as food supplies, as far as weather related issues, as far as the global unrest that is taking place. We have to be prepared, folks. That's why I do these videos. I want you to be aware of what is going on so that you and your family can survive and weather any emergency, any storm, any situation to keep you alive and thriving. I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me today. Till next time, I'm out. Thank you.